Hey everybody, it's Galmadex, and welcome back to some more Magic Arena. Today I'll be playing my very first draft of the Innistrad Crimson Vow draft format. This will be my first time seeing a lot of these cards, and I am very excited to just hop into this brand new draft format. So with that all out of the way, let's check out what we've got in this pack and see what looks pick one pack oneable. So our rare is Howl Pack Piper. Four mana for two, two can't be countered for two mana. Tap it, put a creature from your hand onto the battlefield. If you're putting a wolf or werewolf out, you get to untap the piper to potentially do it again. That is a sorcery speed effect. During the night, it's a 4-4. Four, four. When it enters the battlefield or transforms, you go to the top six cards of your library, grab a creature from among them, put it into your hand. That seems fine, but definitely a bit slow for limited. A 4-mana 2-2 two, two with an ability to put more creatures out is not very good. The nighttime version of this card is fine, but the fact that it's only good at night doesn't, uh, doesn't seem that good. Uh, Markov Retribution seems like good removal for a vampire deck. Skulking Killer doesn't seem great. You only give a creature minus two, minus two until end of turn if your opponent doesn't control something. Right? If they only have one creature on the board and it's two or less toughness, then that four mana four two is good, but that's a very specific situation. Probably should have just taken that red removal spell, but time was winding down on me. I ended up just taking Skull Scab because blue black exploit seems like a really fun deck to me. This is a two mana two two. You get to exploit when you play it, and whenever you exploit a non token creature, you create a two two zombie token. So exploit means you sacrifice a creature to get that effect. So Skull Scab can be really good if you get a lot of exploit stuff um, like these cards here. Ooh, exploit a creature, scry one, draw a card. If we want to just commit to exploit here off of Skull Scab, uh, Stitched Assistant seems like a really good follow-up. That being said, our uncommons are also great here. We have Angelic Quartermaster in white, a 5-mana 3-3 three, three flyer, puts a plus one plus one counter onto two creatures when it comes into play. Really good rate there, probably the best card. Um, but Markov Purifier can be quite the card draw engine for a life gain deck. And Brian Comer can get... Uh, Get a lot of value in a Disturbed deck because all the Disturbed cards do create 1-1 uh, one, one flyers here. So I'm just going to like hard go after blue-black exploit here because of the Skull Scab that I took there and just take a Stitched Assistant, see if it pans out. Looks like it's not panning out so far. Um, although Doom Dissenter seems like another premium card for a blue-black exploit deck. This is going to be a really weird way to start drafting this format, but since I'm not super familiar with a lot of these cards, one of the easiest ways to draft the format you're not familiar with would be to just commit to a strategy really quickly so that I have to narrow down the cards to read to just two colors of cards. So, um, so I think I will, I will do that here and just take like Doomed Dissenter. This seems like the perfect kind of card for an exploit deck because it has a great ability when it dies and it leaves behind two creatures off of just this one card. So you're exploiting twice off of it. There's also Wretched Throng, which seems good for an exploit deck as well. Two mana for a two one when it dies. Uh, you get to search your deck for another copy of it, reveal it, put it into your hand, so that seems really good. I feel like Doom Descent is probably a little better, but Wretched Throng seems close. Because if you get multiples of Wretched Throng, that card seems pretty bonkers. So what do we have here? 2 mana for a 2-1 Flyer with Upside seems very good. If you ever target it with a spell you control, you're drawing a card. Not that that's going to happen super often. Wedding Security seems fantastic. If you have any blood tokens, you get to draw a card off of them and put a plus and plus encounter on uh, from them instead of discarding a card and drawing a card, which is what they normally do. Uh, point of discussion seems fine. Draw two, lose two, create a blood token. Fine little draw spell there. Yeah, I'm pretty happy just taking the two mana, two, one flyer, and then we might be able to prioritize cards like Cradle of Safety that are decent ways to target our own creatures and save them from a removal spell at the same time. All right, so now we have Persistent Specimen, pretty fantastic for an exploit deck, and I do love my reassembling skeleton type cards. This is a one mana one one that for three mana we bring back from our graveyard to the battlefield tapped, get ready to sacrifice it again. Seems great to me. There's also a five mana five four that we exploit it and or that has exploit, and when we do exploit, each opponent sacrifices a creature. Um, we do have a little bit of exploit fodder already, Doom Dissenter and Skull Scab working really well to fill that role, and Gargantua seems quite great at 5 mana. I don't know how highly we're supposed to take the cards like Specimen versus the time the, the time we're supposed to take cards like Gargantua. I think that'll become clear more as the format progresses, but it's definitely one of these two. Um, I'm going to go ahead and take the Rot Tide Gargantua first here. Not sure if that's right. Probably supposed to just take Specimen, I guess. Um, so again, a lot of great combos for exploit cards here. We have Mind Leech Ghoul, a 2-mana exploit card, makes our opponent exile a card from their hand when we exploit. 
Undying Malice, a one-mana card that lets us return something from the graveyard to the battlefield when it dies. So really good with exploit because we just bring back whatever we just sacrificed. So with like Doom Dissenter, we'll get it back, get another zombie off of it. I like both of these cards quite a bit. Grizzly Ritual is fine, but it's a lot of mana for that removal. And Skywarp Scab, I don't know if that's going to work perfectly with our deck because a lot of our stuff in our grave is going to come back from our grave and maybe not, uh, not stick around there. Take the Mind Leech Ghoul here. I feel like Undying Malice is the kind of card that's going to go late very often. And as you can see, it is late in this pack. So we could take it here or we could take Evolving Wilds. Or there's a 2-3 Death Touch that exiles a card from a grave and drains some life. It's a Courier Bats. Pick something back from our graveyard to our hand if we gained life this turn. We don't have any life gain yet. And I feel like Black Whites where that really works out because you have cards like Traveling Minister that gains life every turn. Yeah, I'll just take Evolving Wilds here, but I could see an argument for Undying Malice. Not really going to take any of these other three cards, though. Uh, ooh, Archgul of Thraben seems perfect for the exploit deck as well. A lot of our creatures are going to be zombies, and this makes it so whenever a zombie we control dies, we look at the top card of our library. If it's a zombie card, we can reveal it and put it into your hand, and otherwise we can toss it in the graveyard, which could still be some value if it has Disturb or Flashback. So Archgul of Thraben seems fantastic to me. Um... Wait, is Flashback even in this set? I actually don't know if I've seen a Flashback card. Maybe there's no Flashback this time around. Either way, we've got a ton of zombies. This zombie tribal build around Uncommon is going to be fantastic. Okay, so pick nine. We have a 513 for five. Or a counter spell. Or a little knife that gives us plus one, plus zero, and blood tokens. Costs two to equip, though. A bit of a hefty fee there. I think I'd rather just have the counter spell that makes a blood token. There is a Toughness Matters deck in this format. In black and green, there are some cards that care about high toughness. And uh, the 513 would be fun in that deck, but that's certainly not something I'm looking for in this deck. Well, a really late Wolf Strike, the green common removal spell. Deal damage equal to one of your creature's powers to something else. Um, this is one of the better Mind Rot effects, aim for the head, because it does exile the cards, so they can't use any graveyard synergies to get them back, but I'm still just not, not much of a Mind Rot player myself. Yeah, these are all kind of weird filler cards. Alright, well, I am just committed to blue-black exploit, and it doesn't look like it's panned out that poorly for me, which is kind of crazy, because I certainly didn't draft super well here. Um, but yeah, we've got some spicy combos going on with our exploit stuff, and we can continue that with a Doom Dissenter here again. Alternatively, though, we have Edgar's Awakening, which is fun. Five mana to return any creature from your graveyard to the battlefield, or if you discard it, such as to a blood token... You cast it for only one mana and put the card back into your hand. There's also just a great removal spell, Bleed Dry. Four mana for minus 13, minus 13, and exile the creature. That kills just anything. Uh, Cruel Witness. Four mana for a 3-3 three, three flyer. Whenever you cast a non-creature spell, you surveil one. That seems really good. Wow. All right, well, this pack is sick. Uh, Doom to Center re works really well with our exploit cards. Bleed Dry is just a fantastic removal spell, and Cruel Witness seems like a great flyer. Um, I don't really have much going for removal, so I guess I take Bleed Dry over these other two, but they're both really good. I think there'd be a good argument for either of them. Alright, now I can take the other Doom to Center. We can also take the Wedding Security, but I think, again, I'm not likely to focus too much on Blood Tokens when so many of my picks are, are focused on getting cards that combo well with Exploit instead. And I'm going to want to draft a lot of Zombies to combo with our, our Zombie build around. So I think Wedding Security seems like a very good card, but just not for us. So I think it is doomed to center here. Other than that, it could be just like this flyer, 3-mana 2-3 flyer. Binding Geist also seems fine, but card that just makes the most sense for us, does the most synergy, is doomed to center. All right, so now we have Undead Butler, which seems very awesome for exploit decks. Two mana to mill yourself three cards, and then when it dies, you get to exile it to return a creature from your grave to your hand. Seems super awesome. Probably moderately better than Doom to Center. There's also that Wretched Throng, though, but we only saw one in the last pack, which means somebody else might be trying to draft them. 
And if multiple players are competing for a ton of Wretched Throngs, you're probably not going to get a boatload of them. Plus, now our two drops are going to get really full up, because we're going to have Undead Butler, Double Doom Dissenter, some Mind Leech Ghoul Skull Scab. Yeah, I don't want to... I mean, I guess you can really have, like, seven or eight two drops if you really want, because uh, having too many two mana cards is a lot better than having too many four or five mana cards, since you can just cast two two mana cards on turn four and all that kind of stuff. Um, but still, I don't know there. Uh, well, it's going to be really easy to flip a Desperate Farmer in our deck, so this is kind of a three mana four three lifelink a lot of the time. But whenever we don't flip it, it is a three mana two two lifelinker, so we really want to make sure we flip it. Um, I don't love the Entombed. I do love the Skeleton. We missed our first opportunity to take one, so we could take one now. Although well, there is Cradle of Safety to combo with uh, Storm Chaser Drake, but that's pretty much the only card I think it works particularly well with. Most of our creatures are pretty expendable. So I think I'm just going to take the Specimen here. Specimen combos with so much more of what we're doing. Oh, poor Audric Bloodcursed. How the mighty have fallen. Just a 3-mana three 3-3 three, three that makes some blood. Um, Probably take the big old Flyer here, although there's also the draw spell. Do we have any cards on our deck yet? I don't think we do. We could use a little bit. Like, we have Scry 1 draw a card, I guess. Arch Ghoul maybe draws us a little bit. But we really don't have much, so point of discussion might be solid here. That being said, we have some some self-mill here too. And Skywarp Scab is a zombie, so it works with the zombie tribal card. See a good reason for either. Scattered Thoughts is another draw spell though, isn't it? Four mana at instant speed. Look at the top four cards of your library. Put two into your hand and the rest into your graveyard. All right. Seems very good to me. Yeah, four mana. Dig, dig for the best two cards in your top four. Now we have some card draw. Now another Mind Leech Ghoul. Just have a million two mana cards. A Courier Bat with like no life gain. It's still a three mana 2-2 two, two flyer. I mean... It's not the end of the world. Or a 4 mana 2 3 death touch thing. Just gonna take another Mind Leech Ghoul, although somewhat possible we cut it. We did. Well, I guess we didn't wheel this Cruel Witness. This is a different one. This is pick 8, not pick 9, but. Uh, but this seems good to me. 4 mana for a 3 3 flyer. Again, um, whenever you cast an on creature spell, look for top card of the library and you can put it into the graveyard. So essentially, scry one or surveil one. All right, well, we have double Doom Dissenter now and a lot of two mana cards, so I'm just going to take Cruel Witness over the next uh, the next two mana card because I'll... I won't cut this Doom Dissenter. I'll cut a different two mana card, but I 100% won't cut another four mana card at this point, and I think it fills a role that I'm missing more. Well, we do see a Wretched Throng here. Pick 11, which means maybe if we open up more of them the next pack, we'll get just a million of them, and it is a zombie. Could take the scab, but swapping our two drops into just having like five wretched throngs seems fun to me. It probably won't happen, but I'm a bit of a nerd, so I wanna I wanna leave myself open to the possibility. Bit of a Johnny over here, just trying to get some combo plays. If you couldn't tell already by drafting so heavily after blue black exploit combos over really anything else, so another wretched throng that will almost definitely wheel. Because of that pick 11 last draft, or last pack. So I think I take another Rot Tide Gargantua here. Get another nice late game card because we don't have too much going on there. Seems solid to me. Kittle is by far the best card in this pack, but we are very far off from, from casting a double white card, I think. Uh, yep, and then these uncommons look pretty sweet too, but they're just not blue-black. Ooh, six mana, four, four flyer. When you attack with one or more creatures, target player mills that many cards. This is a very slow card, but you can bring it back from your graveyard to your library second from the top. Seems way slower than anything I'm doing, but the only thing else I'd play here would be a farmer or a scattered thoughts, which are both not as powerful probably, but they're a lot quicker. It's got some freaky artwork too on the Screaming Swarm. Hmm. Maybe the pick's like Desperate Farmer or the draw spell, but I'm going to take this big old uncommon flyer thing. Try it out, maybe. Okay, what do we have now? Evolving Wilds. We don't have any mana fixing yet, so that'd be fine. But there's also Rot Tide Gargantua, Undying Malice uh, for exploit decks. 
which are like some blood cards, some life gain cards. Yeah, these two make the most sense in common, and Cobble Blancer seems pretty good at uncommon as well. This is not a one mana 3 3 because you have to cast it later in the game. You have to wait till something dies or gets milled. But once something dies or gets milled, then, you know, say, say turn four, you can play like a three mana card and this, then you're putting a three, three and a three mana card on the board. Plus you get to draw a card off this later. So Cobble Lancer does seem good. I definitely want to try it out at least, if nothing else. Mm hmm, what do we want here? I definitely don't want a fourth Mind Leech Ghoul. I don't think, I don't think I'm the quadruple Mind Leech Ghoul deck. But then again, I don't know if I'm playing anything in this pack. Maybe the Zombie Bear. It's a zombie. It's a zombie. High mana, little Death Toucher there. We could go for more, like, interaction, like Siphon Essence, but I think or Siphon Essence, but I, I think we're tapping out during our turn a lot because of our just like big 4-mana, 5-mana creatures. I don't think we're holding up instant speed mana too often. Um, so I guess we took the bat over that stuff, which is probably wrong, but uh, just let the timer go down too long reading cards and thinking, as I tend to do. So now with 3 5-drops... Now is when I think I can take this Undying Malice and try that out, because we have so many creatures. Let's get some non-creature action in here. Kind of vary up our deck a little bit. Lunar Rejection seems really good against Wolves and Werewolves, obviously, but it's main deckable because even if you're playing against any other strategy, just four mana, bounce something and draw a card. Although, th two mana to tap something down for a turn draw card might just be even better. Let's hide Trill of the Grave. We are a zombie deck. That's just like tribal sweetness there. Two mana. Tap a creature down and leave it tapped for a turn and draw a card. We don't have very many creatures with higher toughness than power. We have a few, uh, but some are probably getting cut, so I don't think we're playing Catapult to Fodder. Also, don't think we're playing the counter spell, but it's more likely. We do get a second Wretched Throng. Um, we have six non-creatures, though. And I'm not going to play two Wretched Throngs. I'm not going to play Wretched Throng unless I get, like, three. And we only saw one this pack, so... Yeah, we would just have a double Wretched Throng deck, so we'll just cut Wretched Throng and take the Cradle of Safety. Again, to make sure that we have a little bit of variety in our spells, so we're not just running a giant stack of creatures. I do think the Gargantua is probably better than the Scab, so I'm going to take the Gargantua again. We are playing... We are probably playing that, though. But these Mind Leech Ghouls, we're not going to play the million copies of these that we're picking up at this point. Alright. And now I'm just slamming some stuff into the sideboard to speed up the end of this draft here. All right, let, let's get to this deck building here. We certainly have some options. Oh, won't let me, why won't it let me play five Mind Leech Ghouls? If you draft five copies of one card, you are allowed to play them. That's, that's how draft works, or is supposed to work. What the heck? I've, I've been absolutely scammed. It won't let me play five Mind Leech Ghouls. I wasn't going to, but... Um, I guess if I really wanted to, I could get angry and, and file a bug report. Be like, I was going to play five Mind Leech Ghouls and you did not let me. But I'm supposed to be allowed to do that. Probably going like two of them. I don't think Entumor is very good in this deck. Like, it's great with Specimen. Great with Lancer. No, I like all of our other creatures better and we've got a ton of them still. Still have 18 creatures here. Could certainly cut another. It could just cut the six mana big old swarm thing. I feel like we have enough like game enders, like a big old five fours and three three flyers should be putting in work. 
double counter spell seems fine in here just because we are a low removal count. If I just had more copies of Bleed Dry, I would immediately just cut these counter spells because, again, on turn four and turn five, we're still wanting to just tap down all of our mana and play a big card. So we just don't have the time often to hold up these counter spells. But we can just treat these. These are like our six mana cards. After we've played all this stuff, then if we ever get into a top deck where at least we have counter spells to stop them from just playing a massive creature off the top. And then they also let us draw a card, filter out of a land draw. Of course, you know, discard the land draw card off the blood token. So just because we're low removal, we're going to keep uh, keep all that in there. And this is 17 creatures. We could cut a non-creature card now if we really want to. Um, mm -hmm. I don't really love Cradle of Safety in here. Cradle of Safety is the kind of card that gets better the more or the less expendable your creatures are, and our deck is kind of built to where our creatures are as expendable as possible. You know, the more you really want to protect your stuff, the worse this card is, and some of our cards that we would want to protect more than anything would be like Arch School of Thraben, but then when you think about it, we're getting value even when this dies, so we don't need to defend it that badly. Um, so I guess the cards we'd want to protect more than anything would just be like random 5-4s and 3-3 three, three flyers, which don't seem that crazy to protect. And Undying Malice like does a similar thing. If they would die, we bring them back and make them bigger, which means we would get their Enter the Battlefield effects again, like on the exploit triggers. And uh, and yeah, this just also works with our, our cheaper cards for some combos with exploit. So I think if the cut's between these two, then we cut Cradle of Safety, but I'm not sure it is between these two. Maybe we're supposed to just cut another like two mana creature here because we have so many of them. Or... Uh, just like the draw spell, because we're doing okay on value without it, but I don't know. I think I'm going to cut the Cradle of Safety. Could be wrong here, but I think I like Undying Malice better in this deck for sure, and um, I personally think the cut's probably between those two. All right. So here is the deck, Blue Black Exploit, and we pretty much forced it here. Um... Could have certainly ended up in some other strategies, but just saw a cool-looking Skull Scab and, and held on to it for dear life. Uh, made it definitely a simpler draft to just narrow things down to just two colors and see what's the best cards in those colors, what combos the most with what we're trying to do. And uh, and yeah, I think I'm fine with it at the end here. We, we drafted a solid-looking deck regardless, even if we almost definitely could have ended in a, in a better strategy if I had... Drafted the hard way and really read the uh, the sealed pool and saw what kind of cards were wheeling the most, saw what colors are most open. That is what you're supposed to do um, when you get better at drafting and more used to a format. But again, I'm brand new to this format. I've read a lot of these cards for the first time today, so it's going to be a little bit of drafting the easy way for my first premier draft of Innistrad Crimson Vow. So with that out of the way, I think, uh, I think we're going to roll with this deck here. We've got some doomed butlers, some doomed dissenters, some... Some butlers there at two mana. We're just going to be sacrificing all of the poor. Um, <laughs> wow. My brain just went somewhere super dark there. I was going to say, we're just uh, we're just sacrificing all of the poor and the working class. That's kind of what we're doing here with the butlers and the doomed dissenters. And... All right, well, that got dark real fast. I was, uh, I was going to say, before my mind completely just... Uh, it just took me in a very bad direction there. I was gonna say we're gonna we're gonna sacrifice all these poor butlers, all the poor dissenters, those, those poor cards. I didn't mean poor as in like uh, financially unstable, but uh, that's where we ended up here. We are uh, we are Marie Antoinette here, I guess. All right, well. <laughs> Here we are for my very first game in this format, and we are going to be against the number four mythic in the world. So that is, uh, you know, that is just jumping in head first into, uh, into limited of the format. But we've got a great start to this game. Turn two Doom to center into turn three Stitch to system. That seems like probably one of the premier things that this color pair can do. Um, and that seems excellent to me. Because now we're just going to sacrifice that 1-1 one, one, scry one draw card and get a 2-2 two, two out of it and we'll have a 2-2 two, two, and a 3-2 still on this board. Um, we can even offer this trade here, because it's still a good trade, a 1-1 one, one into that 2-1, so we probably get a damage in. Even if we don't, we're happy with it. All right, we don't, but we do sacrifice that, scry one, draw a card, and get a 2-2. Two, two. That seems immensely good. We draw a Gargantua, too. That seems awesome to me. We have more than enough mana to cast it. 
in our hand. Just have to get that man on the board. So, Lantern, Bearer, and Distracting Geist. Uh-oh. My opponent's on blue-white, which means all of their cards have two halves to the cards, so there's like two times as much text to read. Uh, so whenever this attacks, they tap down one of my cards, and for five mana, they put that aura onto a creature and tap down one of my cards when it attacks. Uh, this just gives plus one, plus one flying when it's in the grave. And this gets a plus one, plus one counter whenever it attacks alongside a creature with greater power. Okay, so we're just going to cast Cruel Witness. I mean, that's for sure here. Um, am I attacking and Probably just attacking all here. They could trade Distracting Geist for my 3-2. That wouldn't be a bad trade for them because they can bring back that aura from the grave, but they're just going to take the damage, go to 14 there. So Rot Tide Gargantua, not super good in this matchup. This is going to be at its best against like green, green red, I would say, just green red werewolves. Or like green black, the color pairs that just have big, a lot of big creatures, not creatures that can come back from the grave like our opponent has here. Ooh, Arch Ghoul of Thraben. Whenever a zombie we control dies, we look at the top card of our library. If it's a zombie, we draw a card. So we could play that and then Mind Leech Ghoul, force them to discard a card and maybe draw a card that way. Or we could just not exploit a card and just keep the ghoul on the board. That's probably better. Just keep the ghoul on the board and then we play the Gargantua next turn. Even though the Gargantua's exploitability isn't that good, making them sack a creature. It is still a 5-4, which is good. Although, you know, I feel like making them exile a card from their hand is going to be better than making them sacrifice a creature. I might be wrong there, but it really feels that way. So I think we all attack here for sure. Try to keep the pressure on. That puts the Drogskull infantry in their graveyard so they can slap plus two plus two onto one of their creatures, but we trigger the Arch Ghoul. Chill of the Grave. Do I want to draw that as my draw next turn? Would I play that next turn? I guess Drogskull Infantry with the training is really good here. Because 4 mana plus 2 plus 2 to like the Geist. And then put a plus 1 plus 1 counter on the Rider when it attacks. Then even if I play a 2-2, two, two, the Geist can win in combat. It'll be 3 toughness. Yeah, we're taking a lot of damage here. But we can deal a lot to our opponent as well. I don't think I want Chill of the Grave because I'm probably tapping out for Gargantua. So I'm going to put that into our graveyard. And I am not going to exploit on the Mind Leech Ghoul. Because with an opponent at 9 life here, we need to be able to try to pressure them back for close to lethal. So they do not recast the Drog Skull Infantry from the grave. They do not attack with Drastic distracting Geist because we would be able to trade with it. Turn this down a little bit. That is a super bad time for us. Faithbound Judge, one of the bomb mythics in the set. I have seen this card before. It looks nigh unbeatable. Really have to exile it to win. Yeah, 4-4 four, four, Flying Vigilance. Can't attack into it well. Even if we destroy it, they get an enchant enchantment that kills us in three turns. Yeah, for 7 mana they just recast it, and then if they survive 3 turns we lose the game. Literally get a judgment counter on it, and once there are 3, target player loses the game. Well, that uh, kind of makes things pretty untenable for us to try to win this game. So I guess we're sacrificing our zombie token, right? Trying to draw a card off of it at least. Getting them to sacrifice something. Ooh. Well, we do get to draw a skull scab, I guess, which is nice. They sacrifice the lantern bearer so they can give distracting guys to flying. They are still attacking for just six damage, though, if they do that. If we attack with everybody, they block our 3-2 and take five. Go to four life. Go to four life against a 5-4 and two more attackers here. It's got to be one of the only ways we win this game is if we just put maximum pressure on and just keep dealing damage to our opponent, even in positions like this where we have to lose creatures to do so. Yeah, we, we cannot just sit back against this flying damage and this faith bound judge. So I'm just going to throw creatures away and get some damage in here. Ok, 
Okay, so we do draw a card potentially off of the Arch Ghoul. We do. That is a zombie butler. Now we can play Butler Scab in one turn, which is pretty spicy. Bring something back from the grave. A creature specifically. Oh lord, they have Valor Stance too, so they pretty much wipe our board then. Well, our second Rot Tide Gargantra is looking a lot better, but we are really going to want another Black Source before we play it, because we'd love to play one of these two first. Um, Alright, I'm going to reboot Arena here. I think we might be having some issues where it's technically the time going down on me. I'm unlikely to win this game either way, so if we lose to time, that just happens. But at this point, the rope isn't showing up for our opponent, so I think that this is just day one launch issues going on. Happens pretty much every set. It is an unfortunate thing. Um, but at least if we lose this game, we're not losing a game that we were likely to win. Alright, so here we are in the fourth game that I will be recording. We will see if Arena can handle it this time. We have drawn every round beforehand due to Arena bugs. So if, uh, if you're edited directly to this video, then that's how you can know uh, this game will actually end, or if you've been ended, oh my god, my brain isn't even working anymore, it's been, it's been like a half hour. Um, what am I trying to say here? If you're watching this game, that means this game will progress to the end without bugging out, which is nice. So we've got the sick combo here, Skull Scab out, so that every time that we play a creature with Exploit, we can just sacrifice it to its own ability and still get a 2-2 out of it. So that makes Mind Leech Ghoul just a 2-2 that exiles a card from our opponent's hand. When it comes into play, we still have that 2-2 around to uh, sacrifice to like our Gargantua here. So that's pretty good. Alright, turn 4, we got Cruel Witness here, 3-3 three, three Flyer whenever we cast a non-creature spell, looking at the top card of our library. However, our opponent has a Steel-Clad Serpent, a 3-3 three, three Defender, so we're not hitting with any of our 2-2s two on the ground. Rot Tide Gargantua should be pretty solid here, gonna force them to sacrifice something, likely to just be the Drog Skull Infantry, but that'll still be good. Um, ooh, Undying Malice. Um, we have two Gargantuas, so we can wait till we play the second Gargantua for Undying Malice. If we hit another land on top, any land, we get to play the Gargantua, play the Malice onto it, sacrifice it to its own effect, get a 2-2 two -two and make it a 6-4 on the board. That seems like a really sick combo, but for now we're going to trade our 2-2 two -two Zombie into their Drog Skull Infantry, probably. Um, we could also sacrifice the Skull Scab here and have the same number of 2-2s two on board, but get rid of their inventory or Infantry. But I don't think I want to do that, because I want to have Skull Scab's ability around still. I'd like to Undying Malice on Skull Scab potentially as well. That could be good. So we're attacking in the sky. Neither of these things can gain flying anyway. No, yeah, this thing can save itself from removal spells or give itself first strike. This thing can lose Defender when they play enchantments. All right, so three color from our opponent, blue-white with a black splash, it looks like. They are going to recast the 2-2 two -two as a plus-2, two plus-2 two aura, make the steel-clad serpent a 5-5, five five, play another Gargantua here and force them into losing a good creature. Yeah, they sack the 3-1 or they sack the 5-5. Five five. We don't have the Undying Malice mana, which isn't, isn't super cool. But we'll still have it around. We have so many exploit creatures in this deck, we can still hold it around for something later. So I think I like playing Gargantua Sacrificing the Scab at this point. Letting that just happen. And then we can attack with our 3-3 three, three Flyer and our 5-4 on the ground, and the 5-4 trades off with the Steel Clad Spirit. So we just clear their whole board if they sacrifice the Fleeting Spirit right now. Yep, so we're probably uh, clearing their whole board and still having a 3-3 three, three and 5-4 around. Yeah, this looks great to me. Fantastic board state against just three cards in hand from our opponent. Top deck in the fourth. Grizzly Ritual. Six mana destroy one of our cards. Get two blood. But we still have five damage on board. Just put the pressure on here. And the scattered thoughts here. We could hit a land and a two drop. 
Um, so I'm going to do it in the main phase here. We can also just hit a land and then anything else, and then we can cast Doom to center at least. Yeah. I like main phasing this. Oh yeah, and Cruel Witness triggers when we, we get to look at the top card of our library and we can put it in the graveyard if we don't want it. Chill of the Grave. Uh, I'm going to keep that as an option out of the four cards. All right, well, I'm going to choose that as one of the two cards. Or one of the four cards. Yeah, that and an island, it looks like. And then we'll play the Dissenter, and now we have Chill of the Grave to tap down a blocker next turn, and we draw a card when we cast this. So we just immediately draw into whatever it would have been if we had just milled this instead. Another Grizzly Ritual from our opponent, but we get to hit for, um, hit for three damage here. Um, I don't remember if we have any Blood Token production in this deck. If we have any, then we should hold this island in our hand so we can discard it to draw a card off of a Blood Token later. So I'm going to keep it just in case we do, but I'm not uh, I'm not for sure. Not that familiar with our cards. Take a look through here. Uh, we do. We have two Siphon Essence, which both counter creature and create a blood. So yeah, we'll hold on to this land. Hold on to at least one land at all times to discard to a blood. But we only have the potential to produce two blood tokens total in our deck. Well, Holebreaker Horror is one of the least beatable rares in the set. I could Chill of the Grave on one of our own creatures before this resolves to try to get our counter spell. No, it can't be countered. Oh, good God. Yeah, it can't be countered anyway. Okay. Well, that is going to hit the board, then we'll chill it. And then we hit for three, and if they don't cast anything else... If they cast literally anything else, they kill our 2-2 zombie. But if they have literally no card in hand and they just draw another land, then uh, maybe we have lethal next turn. Probably not, because they have so many blood tokens. Oh my god! Rot Tide Gargantua, play a land Gargantua, make them sacrifice the Holebreaker Horror? What a top deck. Oh my god, and we get to just discard Doom to center? Or sorry, sacrifice Doom to center? Ooh, now you're playing with power. Nice Holebreaker Horror. Wow. Our opponent was was, was probably just thinking, how could this possibly go wrong here? Tap it down and then force the sacrifice. I guess they had no mana up afterwards, so they had to assume, like, we could have had just any sorcery speed removal spell, so not the worst bad beats for our opponent, but I mean, the fact that we just immediately top-decked the Gargantua, that was so good. All right. I'm getting really worried here because every other round that I've played today, three out of the four games that I've played today, has ended in a draw at some point, and we are literally one attack from winning handedly, like winning 20 to zero. So I am going to be very frustrated if this is another draw. All the other rounds, they, they turn into a draw really quickly, so basically like nobody was going to win in most of them. But... Uh, Oh no. Well, spiritual victory this game. We get to kill the Holebreaker Horror. Fight through the Holebreaker Horror and just still have the handily great position here. But uh, it looks like it's a draw again. So, if I did edit it together to leave that game in, which I might, because it basically was the whole game, then... Um, you notice that really took the wind out of my sails there, and that's that's probably why I'm going to sound very different when you hear the start of that game <laughs> to uh, the end of the draft, because it's been a lot of games just like that, where it's not actually a game of magic, it just closes out out of nowhere. So I'm not sure I'm going to play the full draft today, um, which is a real shame, because I, I try to do that in every single draft video that I do. I mean, I literally do that in every draft video that I do, but this is the first time, like, I, I want to get this video out in a timely manner, and I'm already going to have to edit it together a lot, so the only way to do that is if I stop this draft in the next, like, hour here. So if this keeps happening for that next hour, I'm just going to edit together the best games and, and put it up for you all. So my apologies, um, but Arena is having a hissy fit today. But I'll put together the longest games. There was a game early on that ended in a draw that I was... Uh, that I was going to lose pretty handily, but a lot of the middle games, it was just nothing happened all game for anybody. Um, would I like to sacrifice a 2-2 two, two to scry one draw card? Or do I just want a 3-2 on the board? Um, I think I do. With a Cobbled Lancer in hand, that seems good to me. 
Although we have Cruel Witness here for turn 4 if we hit another blue source anyway. But we don't even know that we're going to hit one. Oh, let's attack, I guess. Trade 1 for 1 or Mind Leech Ghoul into their one Brine Comer that came with this spirit. If they want to trade. And then if they do trade, we just play Lancer right now. And if they don't trade, we sack the Ghoul. And see what we draw. Not a blue source. We do want any land to hit the Gargantuas, so I think we definitely scry away that. And then if we still don't hit a blue source for turn four, we just play our Cobbled Lancer now that we have a creature in Grave. So there's their own Cruel Witness. 3-3 three, three Flyer that gets to Surveil one whenever they cast a uh, non-creature spell. Would we rather Cobbled Lancer or Scattered Thoughts here? We're already guaranteed to hit the fifth mana for Gargantua because we have it in hand. So I don't think we need to scatter thoughts here. We have our turn five plays. We'll just play the Lancer. An issue is currently dis disrupting some matches. While we work to fix it, please visit the status page for more info. All right, so hopefully they'll give me a message or give everybody a message when, uh, when it's fixed. And then, uh, and then we'll know. But until then, it's just like if you want to play Magic right now, you just got to cross your fingers for no disruption. It kind of just reminded me that I'm playing against a real human here. Sometimes it's easy to forget when you're playing Arena that you're playing against humans. But uh, I don't know. I was just thinking there's somebody else anywhere else in the world right now playing Magic that got that same, same message sitting across from me playing a Blue-White Flyers deck. I just had a weird, like, <laughs> see the world through your third eye moment there where I was like, oh, hello, opponent, who's also probably sitting there a little frustrated with these issues, who got that message and is thinking about it. Kind of a combined experience here. So now we have a great sacrifice because they just throw a, a pacifism on one of our creatures. So now I guess we will Gargantua. It's still not going to do well against this blue-white deck because they have expendable stuff like disturb creatures they can bring back from the grave, which they will do. Um, but it's better than leaving the Cobbled Lancer on the board because when it's in our graveyard, we can exile it to draw a card later. If it stays on the board, they can exile it to get a blood token later, so we don't want to keep it on the board. All right, so they are going to cast a Fierce Retribution, two mana destroy an attacking creature, kill our 3-2 with that, which means they are pretty, pretty dang likely to have something to kill our 5-4 if they're going to throw that at 3-2. All right, here it is, another Sigarda's Imprisonment. Well, we will sacrifice this Gargantua then and kill another 1-1 Spirit, I suppose. Alternatively, we have six mana total. We could cast one spell either way, because everything we have costs at least three. We don't have enough mana to double spell, so I think the most impactful spell we have is just putting another 5-4 on the board. Although there could be an argument for Scattered Thoughts digging for the second blue, because we really need a flyer to not die quickly here. Maybe it is that. Scattered Thoughts try to get the, the next blue mana. Although if all we hit is another island, then like, we don't get to cast anything else here. So we just take three for five, then next turn we get to play Cruel Witness, we're at six life at that point. Then we get to trade with theirs. I don't know, it, it might be better for Scattered Thoughts, but it feels really bad still. So I'm still just going to cast Rot Tide Gargantua. Either play has some, some big issues, for sure. But this way we take less immediate damage, and if we top deck the island, this is just a strictly better play. But, you know, we don't know what's on top of our library. So yeah, I couldn't have possibly known I was just going to top deck the island, but since I did, you know, things work out pretty well here. Um, I'm going to cast the Archgul of Thraben first in case they have a counterspell. I don't think there's a two-mana counterspell in the format, but I am not familiar yet. So just in case... All right, they have seven flying power on the board. We only have one flyer out. If they have a removal spell, that's going to be game. One card in hand here. Arm the Cathars. Well, not a removal spell, but still real close to game. What did they draw into? Uh, spectral Binding. Oh, that just got thrown into their graveyard from the Cruel Witness abilities. Okay, so just give something minus two here. More Cruel Witness abilities, throw some stuff into the grave. Whispering Wizard is a sick card. Get a 1-1 when they cast on creature stuff. Oh, it gives Vigilance too? Oh yeah, Arm the Cathars gives Vigilance. That is a huge overrun effect. Uh, so our only way, we can't survive. Yeah, we take 8. 
Never mind. That buffs for more damage than I thought it did. So that is going to be the first game that actually finishes. And it will finish in defeat, unfortunately. Feels really bad when we got a legitimate win, but that one didn't count. And then our loss does count. Ooh, they might have shut off joining the events now. All right, well, looks like they took games offline until they fixed the issues, so... I guess I, I can't play anymore, and I don't know when it'll be fixed, so I'm just going to go ahead and edit this together. Um... Yeah, a bit of a bummer ending here going 0-1, but I mean, technically we are like 1-2 right now. Uh, we lost against that Faithbound Judge, that was super good, and then we won 20-0 um, against another deck. Um, and then of course lost in that last round you all just saw. So I guess we'll just say, just pretend that all of the games worked and this was a 1-3 draft here. I did force blue-black pretty heavily. We had some really fun combos and some really good stuff going on in our deck when we draw the right collection of cards, as you saw in the game that we won. We draw the cards in the right order, they they do some ridiculous things. You know, the Skull Scab, the Gargantua was pretty nice late game. They were really good against the enchantment-based removal from our last opponent as well, so I think this deck was really fun, pretty good, but uh, yeah, just a, just a nice medium deck to start off Innistrad Crimson Vow. But I think that is going to end today's video. I am not going to record um, or stream again until I know that the games are actually working, so um, by the time I'm recording again, the next video probably won't come out until, until tomorrow, so... Uh, yeah, we'll go ahead and edit this together, get this up for all of you, so you can see at least something of this new format um, while everybody's having some some arena issues. So the format seems really cool. I mean, this blue-black exploit deck, it was doing some really fun stuff. We played against two blue-white decks, so that was a little bit samey, but, uh, but they both seemed pretty sweet, and they were doing some good stuff. Um, a lot of value, a lot of cards just throughout the game, so... That is my first glimpse of the Innistrad Crimson Vow draft format. I hope you all enjoyed. If you did, make sure to leave a like, comment, and subscribe. That'll help the YouTube algorithm uh, send you some more of these videos in your notification feed. And as always, I will be back again very soon for some more Magic Arena. Uh, also, <laughs> I forgot to mention, uh, but I will be streaming as soon as everything's working. I will be streaming live on Twitch uh, for as long as I can tonight. Um, just more draft to the format, trying to get used to it, trying to get good at it, so you can bring you all the best, the best drafts possible as we continue with the daily draft videos for launch week. So, as always, once again, thank you very much for watching. I'll see you all again very soon.